right, welcome to Nightcap Yoga. I'm Connie Bowman for anybody who's not family or friends. <laughs> and if you're watching this later, um, you can stop the video and go get your pillows and um, we'll wait for you patiently. That was fast, good job. Okay, um, yeah, today, I learned this today. Today is the anniversary of both the National Park System and also the um, presentation of Galileo's telescope to the world. Very exciting discoveries today. So, um, and yeah. So as we um, begin today, I thought we'd try to keep it kind of low to the ground because my dog woke me up at 4.45 this morning. So I'm, I'm um, kind of keeping it, keeping it easy. Hopefully that'll, be good for you guys. So I thought we'd start easily. I've spread my blanket out. I really like that and kind of makes it feel more cozy. And then I thought we'd come down to our bellies and just make a pillow with our hands and turn your head to one direction. Mm, excuse me, get really comfy. Maybe do the soapy shake, settle in. And then if you're comfortable with your forehead on your hands, you can make a pillow and just let that third eye, that seat of intuition rest on your hands. Or you can alternate sides, giving your neck um, equal time on both sides. And then once you get here, just relax. Feel the parts of the body that are making contact with your mat. And feel how the breath feels without doing anything to uh, change it. Just your natural breath as your belly is compressed somewhat into the floor. And just notice what you brought to your mat this evening. Notice the temperature of the air. and sounds in the room. And if you do have a candle lit, maybe there's a scent associated with it. See if you can breathe in, notice that. And as you do, just deepen your breath and feel that sensation of the belly pressing into the floor as you Bring your breath up from the belly into the ribs and all the way up to the tops of the lungs. And exhale through your nose or your mouth. Another big, full, deep breath, just settling in here. And exhale slowly. Usually it takes at least three breaths for me to really settle in. So let this third one allow you to really commit to this practice this evening, commit to this self-care, and then commit to, as we celebrate the discoveries of the day, discovering something about yourself as we move through some shapes and explore the sensation of breath in the body. We'll take a few more breaths here. I thought I'd share this, um, this book, Glimpses of Grace by Madeline Langle. It's a, a daily thought and reflection. Um, and she has, it's not today's reflection, but I liked it because kind of reminded me of the, uh, the discoveries that um, the, the beginnings of things. This is called The Incredible Beginning of All Things. The discoveries made since the heart, 
Hold on. Let's turn on a flashlight because I don't have glasses. The discoveries made since the heart of the atom was opened have irrevocably changed our view of the universe and creation. Our great radio telescopes are picking up echoes of that primal act of creation which expanded to become all the stars in their courses. It would seem that the beginning of all things came from something so incredibly tiny as to be nothing, a sub-subatomic particle so infinitesimal that it is difficult even to imagine. So science brings us back to a God who creates ex nihilo and who then took that early primordial soup, that chaos, and made from it night and day and galaxies and solar systems and all creatures great and small. There are many theories today which I find immensely exciting theologically, but I want to sit lightly enough on it so that if something new and perhaps contradictory is revealed, it won't be thrown off center as were Darwin's frightened opponents, but will go on being excited about the marvelousness of being of snowflake and starfish and geranium and galaxy. So now if your head is not in the center, let me turn off my flashlight, bring it to the center and bring your third eye to that, um, the middle of your hands on your little pillow and just rotate it right and left. Giving a little massage to that space, that place where sometimes we can find new things about ourselves. And then come to center and bring yourself up to um, a sphinx pose. We'll take our hands together, make a fist with your right hand, take your left hand and just wrap it around. And then we'll take a gentle gander over our right shoulder, see if you can see your right feet. Just a little twist, a little stretch for the neck. And then come back to center here and take it over to the left. Good. And then we'll take it back to the right, just a gentle stretch and come back to center. And then we'll take it to the left. So we're just gently stretching right to left a couple more times. Keeping the lower half of the body just where it is. And just noticing sensation as we start. And then come back to center. And you can place your elbows under your shoulders, let your hands come to rest on the mat, and let your shoulders roll back and down. And just gently let your hips soften toward the floor and shine your heart forward. Coming into the Sphinx pose, you can close your eyes here and keep that gaze on that third eye point. And then begin to deepen the breath again, finding that slow, deep inhalation and exhalation. With this light, gentle compression on the back, if it's too much, just lower yourself down a little bit more. But if it feels good, shine your heart and breathe here. Good. Notice how it feels. We're not going into seal tonight, which would be extending your arms longer. We're just staying here for a few more breaths. Just a little back bend to start. Feeling the breath, moving in, and slow, long exhalations. It's 
so good for us. Not only this heart opener, but this gentle back bend, bringing a little compression to the lower back so that when we come out of it, the blood will rush there to restore and reset that lower back. Let's take two more breaths here, just finding stillness. Good. And then take your chin gently down towards your chest, just bowing, stretching the back of the neck. And then on your inhale, gently lift your chin up, stretch the front of the throat. And then your exhale, chin comes back down to chest. And on your inhale, lift back up. Awesome job. Exhale one more time. We'll take this one more time here. And then bring that chin to center. We're gonna slowly bring ourselves up, coming up super slowly, just coming up to a tabletop to start. And then take some hip circles here. We'll get into the hips a little bit, just coming slowly forward on your inhale and taking yourself back toward your heels on your exhale, moving in whatever direction your heart desires. Good. And then come to stillness, bring your knees wide, bring your big toes to touch, and gently, really carefully, let your lower back uh, decompress by coming into your first child's pose. We'll be taking maybe a couple, maybe three of these this evening. And just take it slow, extend your arms forward, maybe lifting your elbows up, and then eventually just let your elbows rest on the floor and let your hips sink back towards your heels and breathe here. Breathe into that lower back the middle back and the upper back. Breathing in, breathing out. It sounds so simple. We breathe all of the, the time without thinking of it. But what we're asked to do in a yoga class is to Actually pay attention to your breath and see what you can discover about your breath. Where does it go? Where can you feel expansion? And where can you feel that emptiness, that release as you exhale? And take a couple more breaths here, fully committing to this child's pose, always having the uh, option to use your pillows underneath your hips or even underneath your belly. We'll be coming back, so maybe you decide you want to try that. So as you're ready on your inhale, come back up to that tabletop and we'll take those hip circles in the opposite direction. So see if you can remember which way you went and go the other way. Maybe you'll take a pass in one direction and say, whoa, I've been here before. No, that's not it. Your body knows. So take those circles, inhaling, coming forward and exhaling, sending those hips back. Good. Slowing down. You can even close your eyes here and just feel the sensations. And if 
your knees bother you here, please put something under them. Let's take one more. And then knees come wide as your mat, toes touch, extend those arms forward, sink back down. So here, just to demonstrate, if your hips don't come all the way down to your heels, a pillow beneath your hips is always nice. That feels really good. And then you can take a pillow and place it underneath you if you like. Hmm, yeah, that's really nice. I just discovered something new. So breathe here. We'll take several rounds of breath, just settling in. Softening where you can. Good. Long, slow inhalation. Longer still exhalation. Good. And on your next inhalation, rise back up, remove any accoutrement. And we'll come up to our tabletop pose. Shake out your hips, do the Sophie shake. Okay. And when you're ready, let your belly descend toward the floor, lift your gaze, breathe in. And as you exhale, round into that Halloween cat shape, drawing your belly into your spine, pressing the floor away, letting the chin come down toward the chest. And as you inhale, just reverse it. Be a cow and be a cat. Take a few more, just working out the kinks, being gentle with the neck. And then on your next Halloween cat, pressing the mat away, draw the belly up into the spine, let the chin come down toward the chest, stretch the back of the neck. And then just relax. And we'll come to a seat. Yeah, Sukhasana. Let's bring our legs into crisscross applesauce. Sukhasana. Or if you really love lotus pose and you, you want to do half lotus, maybe bringing one foot up. I prefer crisscross apples off. Makes me feel like a kid again. So when you're ready, sit up nice and tall. Take your shoulders and draw them up to your ears and then draw them back and down. Just notice what you discover there. Maybe a few little sounds. <sighs> Take a couple more. Never really realize how tight your shoulders are until you do this a few times. Good. Let's let the shoulders rest down far, far away from the ears. And then take your chin down to your chest. Exhale. And on your inhale, lift your nose toward the ceiling. And take an exhale and take that chin down to the chest. And on your inhale, lift the nose high. Let's take one more chin to chest. 
and inhale. Lift the nose back high and then bring it parallel with the mat. And just create some space in your chest by drawing those shoulders out, bringing your arms out wide. And take your left arm across your right and see if you can bring your hands back behind you. Reach for those shoulder blades. See if you can kind of wrap your fingers around them. And just rock gently toward the right, taking your chin parallel with the right shoulder. And on your exhale, come back to center. And take it the opposite way. Good. And come back to center and then open your wings wide. Take your arms and reach across. Give yourself a big hug. And take yourself over to the left shoulder, chin parallel with the earth. Coming back through center, take it over to the other side. Just noticing sensation, noticing how you feel. Release your arms and inhale, sweep them up, look up, and exhale your hands down to heart center, chin down to chest. Reaching up again, inhaling and exhaling chin to chest. Third time's the charm, reaching up, drawing the arms, the hands down, namaste, right at the heart, Anjali Mudra. And then go ahead and clasp your hands, make a little nest with your hands. Bring them to the back of your head, just right around that occipital ridge. And see if you can place a little bit of weight, only if there's no pain, on the back of the head, just drawing the chin to the chest, keeping the shoulders lifted, just getting a stretch of the back of the neck. Breathing in, breathing out. Two more breaths here. Just getting that stretch to the back of the neck. Good. And then slowly release, shake out your hands. Take your feet to the floor. I'm gonna do this with my pillow here. Take your hands behind you so your fingers are facing toward you. Let's lift up into a reverse table, keeping the feet on the floor. Take your gaze back and stretch the front of the throat, the shoulders, the chest, lifting up, breathing in, and breathing out. And then slowly lower back down. See if you can reverse the cross of your legs. So. Again, your body knows, so if it feels funky, that's probably the opposite side. Good. Take your arms out wide. Inhale, reach up and look up, and then take a side bend. Side of your choice, keeping both hips on the floor, gazing in the opposite direction. Inhale, reach up and look up, and exhale, take it to the other side. Same thing, both hips firmly grounded, Inhale, reach up. We'll take two more each side. You don't need me, just breathe with it. You can close your eyes and go inside. Gentle stretch. Good. Last time, reach up, find length in that side body, side body, look up. Bring your fingertips to touch and then draw your palms together. Really press into those palms and let your hands land at heart center. Close your eyes. Good. And then rub your palms together, blink your eyes open. Yeah. Rub them together until you create some heat. And then we'll take those hands, cup your eyes, let the heat of your own energy just soothe your eyes. Those eyes that look at 
screens for way too long these days. Just let the darkness soothe your eyes and feel that heat. Breathing in and breathing out. As you're ready, remove your hands, take your peace fingers and just give your eyelids a little massage, drawing them from the inside out. And then take your fingers to your temples and give yourself a nice little massage. Yeah, and then work your way down to that that little jaw joint or the jaw bones meet and give that a little little massage notice if you discover anything there maybe open and close your mouth a couple of times and then take your hands down just giving your jaw a little massage and then take those two fingers tap right above your eyelids and tap your third eye. Tap below your eyes, right at the cheekbones. And then tap the chin. And take your, uh, just one hand, and just thump your thymus. So good. And then take both fingers, both, both the fingers on both hands, and take them below your rib cage. Good. And then just release your hands to your lap. Close your eyes and just notice. See if you discover anything there. Oh, baby, maybe vibrating a little bit. Yeah, it's good stuff. Take a nice big breath in. And then before we leave this seat, let's take our chin to our chest and just if your neck permits, draw some circles with your nose going in whatever direction feels most intuitive. Noticing what you notice there. Cracks and pops. See if you can smooth them out. And take it in the opposite direction. Maybe a circle is not what you want to draw in front of you today. Maybe you want to draw a figure eight. You can do whatever feels right for your practice. I'm going to take one more pass and then I'm going to pause. Keep my eyes closed. You're welcome to join me and just pause. Notice sensation. Notice this yummy feeling that we're starting to generate. Take a nice big breath in and we'll take some movement and then we'll get into some nice yin work toward the end of the practice. So let's come up to tabletop. Sophie, shake it out. I'm going to leave my blanket here unless it starts to um, annoy me. <laughs> Not that I get annoyed very often. That's a joke. Um, just press your hands into the mat, lift your knees up off the mat and spread your fingers nice and wide and just feel that sensation. Yep, abs start, abs start to kick in, quadriceps start to say hello, keep your breath smooth and steady. And then as you're ready, just take a slow ascent up into that downward facing dog that we love so much. And first dog, just walk it out, bending one knee and then the other. Good. I have no dogs here. They went to the beach tonight. When you're ready, press your heels back to the floor. Find some stillness and notice if your, your shoulders have inadvertently scrunched, come up towards your ears and see if you can draw them down your back. Take a big breath in, come up on your toes. Just feel that sensation of stretching the toes, that length, and then press your heels back toward the mat. 
Recommit, lifting the hips a little bit higher. Good. And then as you inhale, look forward and take a walk to the front of the mat. And find your forward fold. So your forward fold might look like mine, or your hands might want to dangle, or if you have blocks and you like to use them, you might use your blocks. But if your lower back is bothering you at all, bend your knees. Bend your knees a whole lot. Why not? You can even bring your belly down to your tops of your thighs. You can reach behind you and give yourself a hug. Just make this forward fold a really nice, relaxing opportunity to get your head below your heart. And you might rock forward and back slightly, feeling the sensation of finding that center that place between the heel and the ball of the foot where you can find stability. And then find that still point and see if you can maybe straighten your legs a little bit more. Shake your head yes and shake your head no. Good. And as you're ready, release your hands if they're in ragdoll, and we'll just roll up slowly. One vertebra, one little pearl on the strand at a time. And as you're ready, reach up and look up, get really long. Yeah, it's starting to get dark already. Notice what you notice. What have you discovered? Good. And then as you're ready, bring your hands down to Anjali Mudra, that heart center, pressing your palms together, drawing the shoulders back, bringing that chin to parallel with the earth or parallel-ish. Find your mountain pose. Take a big breath in, draw the shoulders back. Nice, spacious heart space, shoulder blades drawing toward one another and lift and spread the toes. Draw the belly into the spine, and then press the toes into the floor. And again, find that still point, that center point where you feel grounded and steady. And just close your eyes for a moment. So many discoveries. When Galileo started playing with his telescope, right? Got him into some trouble. But we found out the truth. <laughs> We're hurtling through space. So how do we find balance amidst all this movement? Well, we can start by blinking our eyes open and inhaling as we reach up and reach for that left wrist and just lean over to the right making that C shape, stretching the left side body. And inhale, reach up again, and exhale as you take a hold of the opposite wrist, stretching the opposite side. Inhale to reach up, maybe look back, see if you can keep your hands framing your arms framing your ears maybe you gaze up towards your thumbs and then as you exhale swan dive forward bringing fingertips to floor blocks whatever your jam is this evening and then inhale as you come halfway up make that half tabletop Ardha Uttanasana and exhale as you fold forward We'll take one more, bending the knees, inhale, root to rise, and exhale, hands come to heart center. Good. Take your hands, coming into mountain pose. So palms facing up, just take your weight over to the left foot and come into a half mountain, one-legged mountain, lifting that right leg up about waist high 
Just notice how that's going to work for you tonight, just standing on one leg. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you have a wall close by. You can take your fingertips there to help you steady. Maybe you find your drishti, something in front of you that's not moving. And then as you're ready, slowly release your leg, release your hands down to heart, heart center. And Sophie, shake it out. Nice job. Let's take our weight into our right foot. See if you can steady yourself with your breath. Maybe start with your hands at heart center as you gently, slowly bring your knee up about waist high. Notice what happens, discover what happens on that right side as you come into this half one-legged mountain pose. I don't know what it's called, one-legged mountain, I think. Take a big breath in, steady yourself, find your drishti. Notice all the adjustments the body makes just unconsciously to keep us standing here on one leg. It's really amazing. The ankle, the foot, the quad, the glute. No drama in the face though, it's amazing. We don't really have to do much, just keep breathing. Slowly release your hands, come into mountain pose again. Excellent job. Lift and spread your toes, reroute, inhale, reach up, let the palms touch, and exhale, forward fold again. Inhale, come to your halfway lift. And as you exhale, we're going to step the right foot all the way back to the back of the mat and get that stretch of the right leg. Feels so good. Rock forward and back. Stretch that foot. Good. And then commit to that left foot being a knee lined up with ankle. And then just let the right hand come down to the mat, keeping that knee lifted. You can always lower your right knee if you so choose. And then take that left arm up toward the sky. Follow it with your gaze. Enjoy a twist here. Good. Big breath in. Nice breath out. And then as you exhale, let's spin around, taking the left hand to the inside of the, the left leg. And then we'll take that right foot, spin it to flat, and we'll come up into a side angle here. So you can come up to your fingertips. Your hand can be on a block. I should be demonstrating my block is too far away. Reach up with that right arm and enjoy the stretch on this side. You can always flip your palm and take a half bind. If you're really feeling good, you can take the, the full bind if it's in your practice. Good. Take one more breath in. And as you exhale, right hand comes down, spin that right foot back so it's facing forward. Good. And then we're going to rise up. So commit, coming up into our crescent warrior from here. So a little low lunge, a little twist, side angle, and now we're in crescent. Good job. Take a big breath in. If you want to challenge your balance, look up. And as you exhale, take your hands down to frame that left foot. And we'll step back, downward facing dog. Come into down dog and just notice the difference between the right side and the left. Maybe walk it out a little bit. Breathe in. Draw those shoulders away from the ears if they're hunching. No hunching. Come up on your toes, stretching your toes. Take a big breath in and press your heels back to the floor. And Yogi's choice here, if you're feeling good, you want to bend your knees and take a bunny hop to the front of the mat or, or just take a walk back up to your forward fold. Once you get there, find your forward fold that works for you. Maybe peace fingers wrap around big toes. Feet about six inches apart. Draw your elbows out to the sides. Let your head dangle. 
And take a nice big breath in and a deep exhalation. If you really liked bringing your belly towards your thighs and you want to wrap your arms around yourself and come into a forward fold here, see if you can straighten your legs a little bit more. Good. Stretching that upper back as you do. And release that when you're ready. We're going to root those feet to rise. Reverse swan dive all the way up. Inhale as you look up, reaching up, and then look back. I mean, lean back. I mean, lean back. Look at your thumbs. And then as you exhale, bring your palms together at heart center and release your hands coming into mountain pose again. Yeah. Here we are again. Back on the mountain. Close your eyes. Feel that sense of steadiness as you balance between the right and the left side of the body. Draw your shoulders back and down, your chin to parallel. Tuck that belly in and then blink open your eyes. Inhale as you root to rise, reaching your arms up and take your right foot up to about waist high. Flex that right foot, engaging that left quadricep. And then bring your hands to heart center. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, find a gazing point, a little spot that's not moving Take your leg back, coming into warrior three. Find your balance here. So toes are flexing, pointing toward the floor. Maybe even a little uh, inner rotation of that leg just to keep make sure the leg's engaged. Find your breath. If you fall out, come back. One more breath in, and as you exhale, we're going to come back the way we came out, came in, <laughs> come out the way we came in, lower that right leg to the floor, shake it out. Good job. How'd you do? No negative self-talk in my yoga class. So lift and spread your toes. Now have your feet about hip width. Let's try the other side. When you're ready, we're just going to bring the weight into the right foot, lift that left Leg high, bending the knee about waist high, maybe a little higher. Flex that left foot. Find your drishti, find your gazing point. And as you're ready, hands come to heart center. Send that leg back for your warrior three on this side. Steady yourself with your breath. Take those toes down toward the floor, engage both legs. Easy, easy. Falling out is absolutely understandable. <laughs> I'm sure Galileo never even tried a warrior three, so no worries. One more breath in. And as you exhale, see if you can come out the same way as we came in. And slowly bring hands to heart. Ah, come back to your mountain. Feel tall and proud and strong, courageous, majestic like every mountain I know. And let your eyes close and just feel that. Big breath in. Exhale to let it all go. Good. When you're ready, blink open your eyes, root to rise, reach up, look up, palms touch, exhale, Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, take your hands to the floor. Step on back, coming into your low lunge on this side. Always the option to lower the knee. But if your, your knee is up, just rock forward and back, getting that nice stretch of the foot. Good. Big breath in. Slow breath out, find stillness here, and then take the left hand to the inside, 
Lift your right arm up, find your twist on this side, right knee over the right ankle, gazing up, opening that heart. Good. Big breath in. And as you exhale, we're just going to spin the back foot to flat, coming into a side angle here, lifting that left arm up, following it with the gaze. Maybe flipping the palm, taking a bind if that suits you this evening. Only if it does. Good. Nice big breath in. And as you exhale, just unwind, bring, bring both hands to frame the right foot. And then unceremoniously, hopefully, we're going to rise up coming into our crescent lunge on this side. Good. Reaching those fingertips high. Steadying yourself. Breathing in. And breathing out. Good. Excellent. As you're ready, hands come to frame that right foot. Step it on back. We'll come into downward facing dog. Breath in and breath out. Another breath in and lift the right leg high. Rotate that ankle on the right leg and go the other direction. And find stillness. And as you're ready, look forward. Draw your knee in towards your belly. Maybe round your belly. Bring your nose towards your knee because that's a nice little stretch. And then look forward again if you've moved your gaze. And draw your right knee to the uh, right behind your right hand. Hopefully your pillows are handy. Look back at your extended leg and see if you can scooch it back even more. Such a great runner stretch here, this pigeon pose. So shine your heart, draw your shoulders down and away. And then as you're ready, prop up as much as you, your heart desires. And then lower yourself down and let your eyes close. as you come into your pigeon. We'll be here for several rounds of breath. So always the uh, opportunity to rise back up and then lower back down, using your breath to come into the pigeon that works best for you. This is a deep, dark hip opener. <laughs> so work with your breath. Really go deep inside. See what you discover about that hip and see if you can be with what is. Be with that sensation. Bring your awareness to whatever is calling to you, but keep your breath nice and slow mindful and deep remember those three breaths if you can get through the first three breaths in a challenging pose like pigeon i have faith that you can do just about anything notice your el your your elbows I said elbows, I meant shoulders. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears. And see if you can soften anywhere. Even if your hips don't want to relax just yet, see if your jaw will soften. Maybe your brow is softening. Let go somewhere. Notice if your neck is OK. 
tight. See if you can encourage it to just soften. And let's just stay together for five more breaths. See what we can do with this hip. Maybe you're discovering you have the tenacity to stay. Maybe you're ready to come out. You always have the freedom. But maybe this last couple of breaths we can do together. Maybe we can achieve some minor shift just by breathing, just by paying attention. Good. On your next exhalation, We'll slowly come out. Take your hands to the mat. Tuck that left foot. Lift back up. We'll come into a downward facing dog and walk it out. Good. And then find some stillness. Just notice the difference between the right and the left side. Is the left side, the left hip, just going me, me, me? Okay, let's lift that left leg up. Inhale and exhale, draw the knee to the nose, nose to the knee, rounding the spine. And then come forward until that knee lands somewhere behind that left wrist, extend the right leg. Decide if one pillow was not enough and you might want two. Decide if you need something, a blanket under your left hip. And then shine your heart, draw your shoulders back and down. Maybe even lift your gaze. And as you're ready, slowly come on down. Maybe your head rests on the pillow this time or maybe you make that little Stack with your hands. Always using your breath, maybe coming out to come back in. Make this work for you. Your pigeon, your practice, will be here for several rounds of breath. So see if you can settle. Such an amazing pose. That might not be the word you're, you would use to describe it about now, but... <laughs> Pretty amazing. Let your breath be slow and smooth. Let your face soften. Swallowing in your throat sometimes can help relax the throat. Also prayer. <laughs> help me get through this. And when all else fails, just acceptance that here we are. Let go of the resistance. Breathe in. Breathe out.
You're doing great. Let's take three more breaths together, seeing where we can let go, where we can make space, and where we can send our breath. Excellent. When you're ready, begin to press yourself up, taking your hands beneath your shoulders, tuck your right foot, and come into your downward facing dog again, walking that dog out, bending your knees as needed. And then pressing your heels back to the floor, lifting your hips up, just a bit higher, breathing in and breathing out. And as you're ready, we'll come forward into a high plank. Lower those knees again to the floor. Let's bring our knees together this time and bring your feet, tops of the feet to the floor and sink the hips back, coming into child's pose. This time, taking your hands and wrapping them around the feet, the sides of the feet, letting the shoulders just relax forward, coming into a little ball here. Breathing in, upper back, rounding forward, and breathing out. Good. Always the option to have pillow under your head, under your hips, under your knees. This is just a passing phase, so we won't be here long. Let's see if you can breathe into this pose. Good. One more breath in. And then slowly press up. We'll just come up to hands and knees. And take one or two pillows and place it right in the middle of your mat. And then we're going to take ourselves, um, our hips below our pillow. So the pillow is horizontal. You can bring your feet up um, closer to your hips. And then we're just going to drape ourselves over our pillow so that our um, the pillow is kind of in the middle of the back, that thoracic spine. I have a big king size pillow. If your pillow is smaller, it's probably actually better. And then the shoulders land atop the pillow and the arms can extend out to the sides. And then if you're comfortable, you can let your legs release or if your back is tweaky, just keep your feet on the floor. And then just breathe here as we get used to this little back bend. You might tuck your shoulders underneath you a little bit more. You might like your hands on your belly or your heart as we breathe here. Just let your eyes close. If you have a clapper, clap off your lights so they're not in your eyes. Sorry, I don't have one. Do they still make those things? Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the clapper. Sorry, I couldn't, I have to finish a song when I start it. Breathe in and breathe out. Just getting used to this back bend. Siri, I didn't say anything. Don't you love it when Siri talks back to you? Good. Let's see if we can release tension in the lower back wherever you can. Letting the shoulders melt toward the floor.
Breathing in deeply, sending the breath all the way to the tops of the lungs, and then exhaling completely. Belly draws into spine. Take one more breath in and on your exhalation, bend your knees, bring your feet to the floor and just lift your hips enough to draw that pillow down so it comes down um, to your sacrum, to your glutes and then hug your knees into your chest. Take a moment here and then as you're ready, just release one leg long and draw this other leg up into your chest, squeezing it in, wind relieving pose. Another opportunity to let go. Breathe in here. Really squeeze that knee in. Now two pillows are really nice in this, um, this shape because you can get a little more height to your hips, a little more stretch on the hip flexor. Depends on the um, thickness of your pillows, really. Let's take another breath in, and as you exhale, just switch. Switch it out. Good. Breathing in, squeezing in. One more breath, full breath in. And as you exhale, release both legs long. Take those arms overhead. Reach, reach, reach. Point your toes, get really long. Lift the belly toward the ceiling, little back bend here. And as you exhale, bring your feet to the floor, knees bent. Slide that pillow all the way down. Maybe take your second pillow, give it a stack. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> stack it up. And then hug your knees back into your chest. We're gonna gently drop the knees over to one side. Yogi's choice. Open up that opposite arm and take your gaze in that general direction. Breathe in and let it go. Two more breaths, at least three breaths in each pose is probably a good suggestion. As that third breath comes to an end, draw your knees back in and gently take your knees over to the other side. Open up that chest. Try to release that right shoulder or that shoulder, opposite shoulder. I don't know what you picked. See if you can let it open up to the floor. Open up a little bit more. Turn your gaze in the general direction of that extended arm. Relax the face. Smooth brow. No worries. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. On this next breath, Draw your knees into your chest. Take one more squeeze and then take anything that would feel good. So it might be a happy baby for you. You can take the outsides of the feet. You can rock from side to side and have a little giggle. Or you can extend your legs up high. Shoulder stand is always an option. Point and flex your toes a couple of times. 
and eventually make your way into your Shavasana. I like having my legs across these nice pillows. Let your feet come wide and let your arms relax out to the sides. Snuggle your shoulders underneath you and let your eyes softly close. And let your face be soft. And just take a moment to acknowledge that you worked your way through some shapes and maybe there were some shifts, some discoveries, and it's so good. Now it's just time to rest. It's the Sabbath portion of our yoga class. So take full advantage of this Shavasana. And just be here. Being Watchful by Wendell Berry. As soon as I felt a necessity to learn about the non-human world, I wished to learn about it in a hurry. And then I began to learn perhaps the most important lesson that nature had to teach me, that I could not learn about her in a hurry. The most important learning, that of experience, can be neither summoned nor sought out. The most worthy knowledge cannot be acquired by what is known as study, though that is necessary and has its use. It comes in its own good time and in its own way to the person who will go where it lives and wait and be ready and watch. Hurry is beside the point, useless, an obstruction. The thing is to be attentively present. To sit and wait is as important as to move. Patience is as valuable as industry. What is to be known is always there. When it reveals itself to you, for when you come upon it, it is by chance. The only condition is your being there and being watchful. So as you're beginning to deepen your breath and watch that deepening, make some small movements fingers, toes, turning the head from side to side. And if you choose to stay right where you are, I would be envious of you. But if you'd like to join me in a comfortable seat and end the practice together, roll to one side and press your way up, coming up to a comfortable seat, allowing your hands to rest 
in your lap or on your legs and closing your eyes. And wherever you are, just take this moment to pause and notice. Notice your breath. Notice your thoughts, your mind. And just notice your body. Being attentive and watchful opens the door to discovery. And perhaps you discovered something this evening. When you're ready, reach your arms out wide. Inhale as you draw your hands up overhead. Reach up for all the goodness and draw it right down into your own heart center. Let your chin bow to your heart. Acknowledging the heart is every bit as important as the head. Thank you guys so much for showing up, keeping me company, and being watchful this night. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. And keep those candles lit just in case. <laughs> Namaste. Thanks, you guys.